Defenses, defenses, defenses. That thing which no one really wants, but everyone needs. Because it's not too exciting to go, oh, my health is higher, so I'll die less. It's exciting to go, oh, my damage is higher. But if you die enough times, trust me, you'll want those defenses, and I'm speaking from experience. Now, shortly before 1.0 came out, I made a beginner's guide to defenses in Last Epoch, talking about the basics at a very high level, made for someone who hadn't played the game before to at least get an idea of what to do and how to do it. If you don't know anything about defenses in Last Epoch, please go watch that video first. But in that video, I promised that if there was interest, I'd make an advanced defenses guide, where I'd go over some specific setups. And so for anyone wondering if there was enough interest, this video exists. Yes, there absolutely was. So today I'm going to go over the defenses that I used in my builds, the Dive Bomb Falconer, the Wraith Lord Necromancer, and the Torment Warlock, to kind of go over all the ways in which defenses interact, or at the very least, go over some of the defenses that I used personally. I'll give an example of the build mapping and talk about a couple things there, then get into the defenses in a little bit more detail. And after I do all that, I'll make a quick mention of a couple of important defensive mechanics that I personally didn't use in any of these examples. And so hopefully between all of this, you can get a much better idea of how to layer defenses for your characters, because having one defense alone isn't nearly enough. And so now let's get into it, starting with some mapping from that dive bomb falconer. While mapping, your first layer of defense is the fact that you can attack from range. You can deal a massive amount of damage by allowing your ballista to explode at the edge of a screen. You can also project damage by having your falcon dive bomb away from you rather than directly in melee range. If you drop a smoke bomb, yeah, the shadows are going to be there and your dive bomb will deal less damage unless you're in melee range of an enemy, but you only really need that damage for bosses anyway. So don't get close, don't get hit. If you do happen to get hit, there are a few layers of backup here. But as a life-based setup that doesn't focus too heavily on defenses, most of the time what I'm really counting on is Silver Shroud. So against one or two stray hits, this setup performs very, very well. But against a constant barrage of damage, even if it's relatively low, at that point my defenses would be overwhelmed and outside of recovery from my falcon hitting things, I'd probably die very quickly. Okay, so first up a build that's not super tanky, but one that might look a little bit familiar to you. It's my Falcon Dive Bomb build. And I think this is where a lot of my characters have gotten in the past. The defenses are okay. I've got all my resistances capped. Uh, I don't really have any armor or dodge because I wasn't focusing on it too much. You know, I'm crit avoid capped. Endurance is all right. That should protect against some one shots. Got a little glancing blow, you know, 41% chance isn't terrible. There was nothing to really write home about here. Aside of maybe that I'm a rogue with 2.5k life, which hey, it's not the worst. And I think a lot of people end up in this situation. To be fair, for a lot of builds, these aren't bad defenses. You can have a pretty good time up to a few hundred corruption with honestly a little bit worse than this. You probably only need about 2k life. And hey, this does show that there's a few things you need to pay close attention to. The first is resistances. Every 1% you're below is 1% more damage taken. So being a couple percent short, not the worst thing in the world. Being 50% short, that's where it starts to be a problem. Now, armor and dodge are nice, but they aren't necessarily the be-all and end-all. But they're certainly good for passive defenses. Armor for mitigating hits you take, dodge for avoiding them entirely. There are some abilities, such as certain boss abilities, are undodgeable. But hey, as long as you're crit avoid capped, you're pretty unlikely to get blown up through endurance with a health pool like this, again, until higher corruption and having a little bit of glancing blow or a little bit of block chance, which I'll talk about later in the video, kind of just icing on the cake. Now, the other thing to talk about is this build uses a slightly more roguish defense, Silver Shroud. You automatically dodge the next hit. In this case, I have Silver Shroud generation on both my smoke bomb and my shift. So despite not having the best defenses in the world, I have to get out of jail free or I win buttons. Combine this with a massive damage projection that I have from Explosive Ballista, and also the Falcon's Dive Bomb, and this build feels deceptively tanky. Next up, we have a Word Hybrid setup. I would consider this to be a medium investment build. The Word here exists to protect your life rather than completely replace it, which means in some cases, endurance threshold might still be relevant, though not in the example that I'm talking about here. It also means something like Life Leech is still relevant. Recovering your life matters because there are some cases where your Word will be entirely eaten away and you won't die instantly. On the other hand, your health pool is a lot bigger than with just life. 
so you can probably take bigger single hits, and the more you scale into Ward, the more true this becomes. Basically, a bigger number, the more you can survive, kinda sort of, since it often taxes your recovery to split it over multiple different things. If you get a bunch of life recovery, your life recovers really effectively. If you're recovering both life and Ward, well, you still only have the same number of stats, usually suffixes and passives, to put into that, therefore your recovery is going to be weaker, doesn't necessarily mean it's objectively weak, just not quite as strong as it was before. Now, another way to build your defenses is as a ward hybrid character. In this case, you're not going full low life. You still have a life pool, and endurance has some value here. But I wouldn't say I'm really an endurance life-focused build. Instead, I'm using ward to buffer my health as much as possible, so endurance is a lot less valuable. If you think about how much value it has, it's what is the total pool? Well, I don't have any endurance threshold, so it's only 20% of my life. And also, I have 3.5k ward sitting over that life, so all that damage has to go through at full value before endurance kicks in, making it a very low priority stat. As you can see, I have mostly capped res, as you'd expect. I have added a decent bit of armor because that does apply to your ward. Not going for any block. This is because you want to generate ward and retain it, as it turns out, an opulent focus is just incredibly powerful. It gives you intelligence, which intelligence gives you ward retention. That's part of why I have 400% ward retention. It gives you extra ward retention, and it gives you ward per second. So you're generating more and you're keeping it for longer. And the other stat that you might occasionally see is ward decay threshold. Basically, you can think of it as extra ward before the decay kicks in. So as you generate more and more, it builds up, it gets past a certain point, and then it decays down, and you reach what I would call the stable state of ward. So if I take this off, I'm now generating less, and I'm retaining it worse, so my ward starts to fall. And if I put it back on, it goes back up. In theory, I'm still generating. It's just that 3.5k number is where it hits equilibrium. And this is all enabled by Warlock Things and the Bone Clamor Bar Boot where I'm stacking as much necrotic resistance as I can, and I gain one ward per second for every 3% uncapped. You know, all 565%, which isn't even a ton from this build. You can probably get up to like 800% in good gear. My gear is just pretty okay. Not terrible, not great. I think most of these items are quite realistic. Maybe you don't hit the two LP, but one LP on a lot of this stuff is perfectly fine. Hell, I don't even have one LP on my immolators. And this is necrotic damage, so it's not affecting my defenses in any way. Zero LP Ominous is a perfectly achievable item if you set your mind to it. And then the Malin's Hubris is much more about damage than defense. So obviously, Ivory Rings are super, super valuable. Item Implicits, when it comes to defense, is often very important because you're getting both the necrotic resistance and also the word decay threshold. Then obviously you want necrotic resistance as an explicit. While the health isn't super important, personally, I found that I liked it because of how stun works in the game. In short, having that little bit of extra helped me avoid being stunned as much as I was before. And then one other thing, extra defenses. Uh, don't mind the crit strike avoidance stuff. Uh, that should absolutely be 100%. It's just uh, as I was swapping stuff around, I didn't end up doing that. It isn't optimal, it's just the state my character was in. And that's going to be true for a lot of builds in Last Epoch, where your character in whatever gear you have might not end up in the optimal state. Does this negate all my other defenses? No, absolutely not. Does this mean I am more susceptible to instantly dying in crit maps? Yes. If I continue to enhance my gear, and I continue to push things, and I continue to play the character, I would very much want to fix this. That way, I end up negating enemies' ability to critically strike me. Thus, I increase my defenses. Alternatively, though, this is where things get interesting. There's a second way to deal with crits. Yeah, okay, I was kind of baiting you with this, because I do have an answer, though it is still an in-progress thing. Don't ever want to just go with a one-size-fits-all. Crit avoid, not useful to this build, because we have crit reduction. So, enemies get bonus damage when they critically strike you. 
In this case, that bonus damage is being reduced by 48% and 28%. Meaning, I'm negating about 75-ish percent of the extra damage they do when dealing a crit. If I got one extra roll of this, or maybe I got a higher tier on the chest, because right now this is only tier three, it goes up to tier five. Maybe I have something like a sealed mod on boots. Well then, all of a sudden, enemies can crit me all they want. They're not doing extra damage. Uh, I think I might have a Leviathan Carver. Let's find out. It's a really cool sword, but also gives a whole bunch. Oh yeah, here we go. Basically, you're just so intimidating that you channel the spirit of guts and enemies look at you and go, well, I'm not going to hit him. I can't hit him hard. He's scary. Just you defend yourself with sheer intimidation. Now, the advantage of a setup like this, because you are neither fully ward nor fully life, you can still recover your health via potions. It's a little bit less strict in terms of the gear. And in fact, on Warlock, it's not strict at all because I'm already stacking Necrotic Res to scale my Torment damage. And you get a pretty good little extra recharging shield. You'll notice after I use some stuff here, my Twisted Heart of Ukaros eats health, gives me ward. My ward starts to decay and my health starts to tick up. Ward is decaying because again, I'm over the threshold at which it is stable. The health being eaten is just Twisted Heart. It's converted over into ward, which isn't necessarily something that you do if you're going with a setup like this because there's an entirely different way to build this kind of hybrid ward life character. And that would be a Vessel build. Vessel of Strife drops off of T4 Jewelra. It applies health regeneration to ward. You can get absolutely absurd bonkers numbers here. You can regenerate well over a thousand health a second, which then becomes generating a thousand ward a second. This would have been particularly useful on, say, the rogue build that I just showed, which couldn't get into the necrotic res stacking and might not be getting any benefit from Twisted Heart if you're not using a necrotic or elemental skill. And so this is another way to build your defenses. Personally, I do really like both the ward and life hybrid, though, as a note, they're a little bit more gear intense than just for pure life setups. As I go through this video, I'm kind of going from the least gear intense to the most gear intensive. And last up, we have the final boss of defenses in Last Epoch, low life ward based setups. First of all, to play, you need gear. There are several unique items, such as Exsanguinous and Last Steps of a Living, which I'll get into when I talk about it in more detail, which you absolutely need before you can even start this. But usually the default versions aren't good enough, so you'll need these with LP. But in exchange for all your time spent farming, or maybe all your gold if you're a member of a Merchant's Guild, what you get is, well, I'd say unlimited power, but there are limits. You do get an absolutely massive health pool, often between 10 and 20,000 ward, yeah, those numbers sound absurd because they are. Ward is a very, very overpowered. And if you can get that kind of setup going, you'll absolutely find it to be very rewarding. It also means you get to ignore a lot of the other defenses in the game because mitigating, say, 50% of the damage you take with armor, if you just happen to have four times the health that you normally would, doesn't become as important. Now, if you can get both, both is still better. And so here we have a low life build with around 12,000 ward and no health to speak of. Low life builds work by converting health into ward. This is done with the Exsanguinous chest piece, where 20% of current health is lost per second, and 20% of missing health, i.e. the difference between the 44 that I have and the 3730 that I could have, is gained as ward. Then last steps of a living, which does the same thing, but with smaller numbers. It's up to 15%. So, you can use things like Twisted Heart of Ukros as well, if you're casting something that's applicable. There's a few other items that interact with it, like this Chronostasis Sword that provides extra ward. Technically, that could be used on a ward hybrid build as well. And there's the Experimental Mod that turns, again, missing health, into ward every second. Basically, you just get a massive chunk of ward gen, because it's 12, 24, 44. 44% of 3730 gets converted over into ward. Minus the little bit that I have because I have a little regen and all that fun stuff. Right now, this is the most powerful form of defense in the last epoch. 
to the point where you can actually start ignoring other things. Like, I don't have armor here. I'm cruising around in 600 corruption. Don't even care. Um, endurance doesn't do anything because endurance protects life. I don't have any glancing blood chance. I don't have any block chance. We're going with the same kind of offhand catalyst stuff. Crit strike void should be 100. But you know what? 1% chance to die when enemies crit me. Uh, kind of okay with that. Mostly just because I'm too lazy to fix my blessing from Reign of Dragons, which is really all I need to do. 65% or higher and I'm good. Because this is very powerful, a lot of people want to do it. However, it makes a huge difference but rolls on your items. Let me see if I have Exsanguinous and Last Steps without any mods. I think I do. I think, yes. Oh, perfect. So watch what happens to that 12,000 ward. When I take off, I guess the Last Steps don't matter because the LP mods are offensive rather than defensive. You'll notice my health went down quite a bit and my ward is dropping. These kind of builds are very much win more. The more health you get, the more effective your war gen is. The more effective your war gen is, the more invincible you feel. Doing things like play an Acolyte, who can roll extra health relics. Double health relics if you happen to get lucky and find more than I did. I didn't try very hard to farm them. That kind of stuff is absolutely massive. I mean, just swapping out the Exsanguinous, that is now down to 10.5. But for another comparison, what if I add the chronostasis? Before I was at like 12k stable, watch how much this shoots up just by swapping out a weapon and gaining an additional 73 ward per second and plus 8 int. Because remember, just like with the other builds, word retention is important here. Stacking intelligence gets you more word retention. I'm not doing any sort of necrotic res stacking. And yeah, we're over 13,000 ward. Another really strong item for this, which I have somewhere here. Ah, here we go. Let me just grab this out of my stash. Frostbite Shackles. Frostbite Shackles allow you to get additional word retention based on uncapped cold reps. So right now I have 113, so that'd be 113% word retention. If I put them on though, right now my word will probably drop because I'm losing the word gen from the experimental affix. So I'd have to get some with one LP, then turn it into a legendary. Yep. It's dropping despite my ward retention having gone up. I retain better, but I generate less. And remember, your total ward is a combination of your ward decay threshold, your generation, and your retention. If you see a build super deep in corruption, it's probably going to be one of these or set up like ahead of a start. It's just abusing Silver Shroud and not getting hit due to an ability to off screen. On this particular build, I'm Wraithlord. And Wraithlord is very, very janky. He does absolutely massive damage, but only kills three things at a time, so you can get swarmed and overwhelmed, which is why being extra tanky and going low life is absolutely the play. Plus, this wasn't my first character. I have quite good gear, and because I could invest into it, I was able to go low life. Because low life is currently the most powerful form of defense, I do think it should be your goal if you can fit it in. Alternatively, you could do a life ward hybrid, using Bone Clamor, Barboot, or Vessel of Strife. In general, Ward is just a lot stronger than life, though going into 1.1, that could easily change. So if you're watching the video in the future, while many of these defensive setups will still work roughly the same way, their strength relative to each other could have changed. Oh, and if you want to see me make a low life version of my Torment Warlock, a, let me know down in the comments below, and then B, get subscribed so you don't miss it when I upload it. Maybe leave a like while you're down there. But for now, let's talk a little bit more broadly about some other defensive shells that I didn't want to explore in too much detail, but I do think are worth mentioning. Another way to scale defenses, which is particularly available to the Sentinel class, you know, Paladins, Void Knights, etc., is block. Block typically requires that you hold a shield, and it protects you from a portion of damage. With a 100% chance to block, your block effectiveness provides a damage reduction, somewhat similar to armor, scaling for diminishing returns, which you can always use against hits. It does not apply to damage over time. So in a sense, you could think of block as a two-part armor. Note, you cannot get 100% block effectiveness, even if you can get 100% block chance. So no total damage immunity glitches. The other interesting defensive setup that I wanted to call out here is on Lich, you can use a skill called Death Seal. 
This seals a portion of your life, meaning that you'll constantly be in your endurance range, at least if you set everything up correctly, while also giving you access to massive amounts of armor and other defenses. So if normally having more life is better life, then in the case of Death Seal Lich, having less life is better life because you're turning your empty health globe into a massive amount of defense. Oh, and damage, yeah. Death Seal also provides a ton of damage. So if you ever feel like splitting your soul and setting up some Horcruxes, I guess you could go Death Seal Lich as well. Now, I haven't played either of these builds in 1.0, so I'll link to some guides over on Maxwell where you can see practical examples of these defensive setups. I wanted to call them out because they're very cool and I have played both in the past. And speaking of, if you want to see a little bit more detail about either the Torment Warlock, Falcon Dive Bomber, or Necromancer, I'll leave all of those down below. You can take a look at a full guide video where I break down my gear, including a lot of the choices I made and why I'm making them so that you can get a better picture of the defenses. Now, before I go, I'd like to take a minute to thank my patrons and channel members for the continued support, because I really like making videos on defenses and defensive setups, but unfortunately they don't tend to do very well in the YouTube algorithm. And so it's due to direct support from patrons and channel members that I'm able to keep making videos like this. And hey, you might even see your name on screen like these fine folks here. But also a big thanks to everyone who watched to the end. Hopefully you learned something about how different defensive layers interact and what a full defensive setup looks like. Also, hopefully as a result of this, you die a little less. And so good luck in your echoes, make sure you get all those quest rewards, and I'll see you in the next one.